and parents are looking for guidance for the plans this fall. But it must be done safely, and it must be done under the right conditions. Over the past few weeks, we've started to reopen Ontario's economy. We took a regional approach that matched the reality on the ground in the different areas across the province. And as regions of the province move at different speeds to reopen, the same should apply for their local school boards. We simply can't provide a blanket solution for the whole province. Instead, we need to provide school boards the tools and the guidelines to get the kids back in the classroom. We need to empower the school boards to make decisions based on their local needs, their local challenges, and their local priorities. Over the past few weeks, we worked with our Chief Medical Officer of Health, our command table, and the experts at Sick Kids to develop guidelines for school boards to help them prepare to reopen schools in the fall. And today, we're all rolling out our plans to work with school boards across the province to get kids back to school safely, based on the best medical advice available. We'll be working with each school board throughout the summer to create a plan that fits best for their communities. The options will include regular in-class learning with public health protocols in place, at-home learning, or a mix of both, within class sessions capped at 15 students and students attending on alternate days or weeks. Minister Lecce will get into the details in a moment, but I want to make a few things clear. The fact is, this virus remains a threat, and the health and safety of our children will always remain top of mind. But I can assure you, Minister Lecce and his team are working hard to get you and your family the answers you need. Answers on safety, answers on routine, and answers on your child's education. Our plan ensures that whether you live in St. Thomas or Mississauga, Ottawa or Kenora, rural or urban Ontario, school boards have the flexibility to choose what works for their schools, students, and teachers. We're taking a, a very, very uh, cautious approach here, but as a parent myself, I know how you feel. Many are worried about this new environment, and you need certainty as we move forward in our plan to reopen the economy. So I want parents to know that you also have a choice. If you don't feel comfortable, if you're worried about your child returning to school, we'll keep at-home learning available for your child. The health and safety of every child remains my top priority, bar none, over anything. And as we get closer to September, we will continue to keep parents informed and we'll make sure your child can keep learning in the safest way possible because nothing is more important than a child's education. Thank you and God bless the people of Ontario. I'll turn it over to Minister Lecce now. Well, good afternoon and thank you. Uh, first off, if I may, I just want to offer my deepest condolences on behalf of the ministry uh, to the educator and the children who passed away so tragically last, uh, last afternoon. As the Premier made clear, we made a commitment to parents to unveil a plan before the end of June to keep students safe and to keep them engaged in learning. To unveil a plan that enshrines safety as our guiding principle. Notre gouvernement met toujours la sécurité au premier plan. Today we are unveiling a plan for the safe reopening of schools for September. A safety plan developed in consultation with the best medical mind, the chief medical officer, the COVID-19 command team the hospital for sick children, educators, parents, and students, and of course, you, the public. And let me lay out our vision, let me, uh, our plan to get kids safely back to school. First, we will be ready for every scenario. We are tasking school boards in Ontario to produce three plans to prepare for any circumstance that gets thrown at us as a problem. Number one, a plan for the return to regular in-class instruction with strict health and safety protocols. The second plan is a plan to the continuation of remote learning by strengthening the use of live online synchronous learning and instruction and creating, creating greater standardization of that approach. And finally, a plan, uh, an adaptive delivery model that blends the in-class instruction with online learning. It would include alternate days or weeks and staggered bells so that class sizes do not exceed no more than 15 students within them. This cohorted approach 
ask that students remain in contact only with their classmates and to extend possible a single teacher throughout the day. This reduces risks, it enhances contact tracing, and it allows kids to be kids, to play together, to eat together, to study together, to give each other a high five. It's important uh, to the social and emotional learning and development of these kids and their mental health that they're able to do that. Now for September, while boards will have plans in place for all of these scenarios, I expect that all Ontario students uh, will enter into a cautious adaptive delivery model. What that means is classroom sizes of no more than 15 students for September, every other day or week in class instruction, supported by and strengthened online learning experience. We are being cautious, but as the Premier has said, we will not put your child or our staff at risk. We will start using this model, and after September, we will evaluate the effectiveness, the, uh, the safety, and operational impacts. Shall Ontario continue to plan the curve and make gains on a regional basis, we will allow school boards to move closer to that conventional delivery. That is important. Meaning if the data moves in the right direction, then we will slowly but prudently move towards conventional class experience, but always with those strict health and safety protocols in place. That decision must be approved by the local health officer. We will establish a table of leading doctors and scientific experts to review the plans presented by the boards to ensure that evidence, science, and medical expertise guides those decisions. Folks, we know kids need to be in class. We've heard this loud and clear from the hospital for sick children and other medical leaders. The mental health impacts are real on our kids. So we hope and we're planning for students to return over time in short order to a full-time in-class experience with health and safety protocols in place. We know the value of human connection and community for our religious and religious learners. Many students haven't seen their classmates since March. We know our schools do much more than just educate our young minds for the future. They foster a sense of community. Now, as the Premier said, we've had extensive consultation with so many with parents and students and educators and staff on the way forward. And what we have heard loud and clear from parents is that you want to be in the driver's seat and ultimately have a choice. They want and will have an option to enroll their child in class or in a strengthened online learning experience. Parents should make that decision and we will respect your choice. Now, for, with respect to funding, to prepare and ensure a successful restart, every school board in Ontario will receive funding increases. For people funding is up. We're investing in the grant for student needs an additional $730 million to ensure our restart is safe for kids. We've increased mental health funding for September by an additional $10 million, which is gonna help hire more psychologists, psychotherapists, and social workers. We've increased funding for technology, an additional $15 million to purchase upwards of 37,000 devices and Chromebooks for kids in the province. These are the two highest investments ever recorded for mental health and for technology, with health and safety as well being top in mind for the government. Top of mind, we're also providing $4 million to school boards to assist with enhanced cleaning, uh, procuring of hand sanitizer, and soap. Because at the end of the day, we'll do whatever it takes to keep kids safe. We're also increasing investment for special education and asking boards to ensure students with significant special needs uh, are in class for the entire week. To support those parents who have asked us for a plan that creates stability and consistency for their child. Now these plans will be developed in partnership by boards, working with their local unions, with communities and parents to develop these plans and implement. You know, the next 75 days will be critical. So I'm asking all the parties to embrace that spirit of partnership as we work to develop and implement the safe reopening of schools. Finally, I just want to end by thanking our educators, our parents, and our amazing students, you've truly inspired our province through this difficulty. And to our grads, we salute you for getting through this. This is a, a year for the history books, but we are incredibly proud of your contribution. So thank you to parents, students, educators, for your hard work, and thank you for the opportunity for you. Thank you, Minister. Um, before I start, um, a message to the the Chisula family and and the loss of of a beautiful, beautiful family, three kids, a mother. It's absolutely heart wrenching. Our prayers, our thoughts are with you and your your entire family. 
and justice will, will be served. Our prayers are with you. We'll, we'll start off with the, uh, the questions. It will go to the phone.